In this video, we're looking at a lens combination. We have two converging lenses, one with a focal length of 15 centimeters on the left, one with a focal length of 20 centimeters on the right, and these lenses are separated by 70 centimeters. We've placed an object 20 centimeters from the first lens. And notice that I labeled that as DO1 because the image produced by the first lens is going to be used as the object for the second lens, and that would be DO2. And what we're after in this slide is we're trying to make as accurate a ray diagram as we possibly can. And we're going to be able to approximate the final image location and the final magnification relative to the original object. On the next slide, we'll run through the lens equation and do it quantitatively. So we start by taking a ray headed parallel to the principal axis off of this object. That's going to refract through the focus of the first lens. Then we take a ray headed through the center of the first lens and that ray is unrefracted. And finally, we take the principal ray that passes through the near side focus, and that ray is refracted parallel to the principal axis. Those rays all converge at a single point, and that's where the first image of the arrowhead is going to form. So there's a couple of different things that can happen with a lens combination, and this is the simplest one. The image from the first lens landed on the left side of the second lens, and rays are diverging from that arrowhead in all directions. So I'm allowed to use the first image just as a simple object for the second lens. The second case is when the first image lands on the wrong side of the second lens. That's called the virtual object and it makes the ray diagram really tricky and I'll post a link to an example when I have it done. So thankfully we have the simple case here and I treat my first image as the object for the second lens. I'm going to take a ray parallel off of that and that'll be refracted through the focus on the opposite side. I take a ray passing through the center and that's unrefracted. And then I'll take a ray coming from the direction of the near side focus. And unfortunately, we've run out of grid space here and we went past the edge of our lens, but we know the lens is still at this horizontal value. And that ray coming from the near side focus is refracted parallel to the principal axis. So on the right side of the second lens, I see three diverging rays. In other words, we have a virtual image here. So we're going to trace those rays back to a common origin. And that's where you'll see the object if you look through this lens combination. So there's the first one traced back, the second one traced back, and the third one traced back. And so the head of the arrow in this virtual image forms at the intersection of those three rays. And we're asked to find the location of the final image relative to lens two. So it looks like it landed almost exactly 20 centimeters to the left of lens two, and we'll check that out quantitatively on the next slide. And just a little clarification, that first one is lens one on the left, lens two on the right. And then our magnification, we can approximate that using the grid spacing. My original object had a height of about one and a half spaces. My magnification is gonna be the final height divided by the initial height. And my final height, Looks like it has a little more than nine spaces, maybe nine and a half. And the image is inverted, so the magnification should have a minus sign on it. So I get a magnification of about negative 6.3. And we'll check that out quantitatively in a moment. Next, we're going to handle this whole thing quantitatively with the thin lens equation and the magnification equation. So the magnification at each stage is given by negative image distance over object distance. And the strategy is just to use the image from the first lens as the object for the second lens. And I'm going to index these as one and two for the first image formation and the second image formation. So for our first lens, we had an object distance, the distance between the object and the lens of 20 centimeters. And that lens had a focal length of 15 centimeters. And we plug into the thin lens equation. And one over di is gonna be one over f minus one over do, so one over 15 minus one over 20. We use a calculator to get that, one over 15 minus one over 20, and then we take one over the answer to get the reciprocal. And that gives an image distance, I really should be good about indexing these things, of di1 equals 60 centimeters. The magnification at this stage is negative di1 over do1, and that gives me negative 60 over 20 or negative three, which means the size of the image is three times the size of the object, and the image is inverted. Now we take the image from our first lens and we run it through the second lens as the object. 
and our lens separation was 70 centimeters, but our image was 60 centimeters to the right of the first lens. That makes it 10 centimeters to the left of the second lens. So DO2 is 10 centimeters. The focal length of that lens is 20 centimeters. And I run everything through the thin lens equation. So DI2 is what we're after. And that would be 1 over F2 minus 1 over DO2. That's 1 over 20 minus 1 over 10. I calculate 1 over 20 minus 1 over 10 in my calculator. Take 1 over the answer and I've got DI2. This gives me an image distance of negative 20 centimeters, in other words, 20 centimeters to the left of lens 2. And that agrees exactly with what we got in our ray diagram. Next, I'll get the magnification at this second stage. So that's negative DI2 over DO2. That's negative, negative 20. In other words, a positive magnification. In other words, the orientation doesn't flip at this stage. The image stays upside down and my object distance was 10 centimeters so i get a magnification of plus two at this stage that just means the size of the object was blown up by a factor of two and the orientation was not flipped finally to get the total magnification you just multiply these magnification factors at each stage so we blew it up by a factor of three and flipped it that's a magnification of negative three and then we blew it up again by a factor of two. So that's a total magnification of six, but with a minus sign because the final image is inverted compared to the original object. From our ray diagram, we had predicted 6.3 for the magnification, and that's an acceptable difference. A ray diagram should be used as a check on your work, not forgetting the actual analytical solution. If you find the physics content on Zach's lab helpful, Click on the Zach's Lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce over 100 new videos per month, and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.